First of all, I'd like to have ask uh, Commissioner Griffin to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Where's the flag? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. master plan. That's what this is all about. But first, let me give you a little bit of a review. Emergency exits are up at that door. You can push both of those doors open if you need to get out. And if you're on this side of the room, you can run through the kitchen and get out that door. And if you're over here, you can go out through the, um, the foyer and out the glass doors. Also, the boys' and the girls' bathroom are out in the foyer if anyone needs to use them. And that should take care of direct water and cookies are somewhere around if someone needs it, over there in the corner. I see you're keeping a good charge of those cookies. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank very much the cooperation and generosity of Superintendent Kathleen Murphy, including the scrolling of the hearing on the Academy's electronic sign. I'd like to thank Marston School Principal Lois Costa for her assistance, Facilities Manager Keith Lasad for and his staff, Channel 13 and SAU 90 IT Director Greg Lumpers, and Town Manager Fred Welch for announcing the hearing at every selectman's meeting for the past month. Fred, I think your announcement really worked. <laughs> uh, this meeting is viewable live stream and tomorrow will be available on the school website and possibly the town website as well. Let me take just a couple of minutes to give you a very quick history of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. The Hampton Beach Area Commission was placed in statute by the New Hampshire Legislature in 2003. It consists of representatives of seven stakeholder groups that you see seated at the table tonight. In 2015, the Commission was awarded a grant to update its master plan. A couple of responsibilities defined in law for the Commission are, one, consult and advise the state and town on implementation strategies according to the Hampton Beach master plan, including improvements. Two, consult with the Hampton Beach area businesses and residents to promote the plan. And that is what we are doing tonight. Um, there were five previous public hearings held that created this plan that you see before you tonight. As for the process for tonight, the commissioners are here to listen to your input and not to engage in conversation, saving time for you to speak, as we do need to finish by 9 o'clock. We are fortunate to have two uh, Winnicott High School students with us this evening. Raise your hand. <laughs> they will be carrying uh, the microphones for you to speak. So if you want to be heard on the TV, you need to speak into the microphone. If you're not speaking into the microphone, no one's going to know what you said. When you came in tonight, you found a 3 by 5 card on your seat, and there were some extras, extras over there on the table. For you to take note during the presentation uh, of any clarification questions you may want to ask, but most importantly, for you to print, and I repeat, print your name on the card and hand it to one of the girls when you speak. That way, our, assist, our administrative assistant here, Anne, will be able to spell your name correctly for the record. Tonight we have with us William Rose, Senior Planner for New Hampshire's Department of Transportation, and Pete Clary from DHB, the Contracted Consultant, who will share with you the results of the study update for the Minnesota Plan in the areas of transportation, parking, and public safety. 
which will be forwarded to the Department of Transportation during their engineering portion of the rehabilitation of Route 1A. If you want to see it on Route 1A, it needs to be in the master plan. Mr. Rose and Mr. Clary will complete the full presentation, which may answer some of your questions in, in the process. Then we will open it up for clarifying questions of the plan, which, will, which they will address and answer for you. And I will do my best to moderate the session to try to make sure we get as many hands up and questions asked as, as possible. And the students, um, Andy and uh, em Emmy, are, will carry the mics for you. I think it is important for you to understand um, the connected but separate phases of Route 1A reconstruction. They are separate but connected. The Neil Underwood Bridge, also known as the Hampton River Bridge, is the number one red listed bridge in DOT's 10-year plan. Engineering or reconstruction and replacement is scheduled to start in two, 2019. I'm sure there will be plenty of opportunities for public input at that time. Similar to what we have we have done with the Rye Bridge. Um, many of you may know that that bridge is being replaced as well. The second uh, phase is the reconstruction of Route 1A. It is in the 10 year plan for 2018 with $8 million, $280,000 of which is scheduled for engineering. And we are told that that should begin somewhere around uh, October of this year. That is when they will talk about drainage. Drainage will come into discussion when they do the engineering for Route 1A. This will take coordination and cooperation of both state and town to address drainage for the whole area. Road construction is scheduled to begin in 2024. The $8 million may not be enough, but what, we'll have a better of the numbers after the engineering is complete. And we'll rely on our legislators, and I know that uh, we have a couple of them here tonight. I know that Representative um, Cushing and Representative Edgar are in the audience. Did I miss anyone? Emmerich. Emmerich. Uh, Representative Emmerich. And uh, anyone else? Anyone over that side, Tracy? Anyone else? No. Well, thank you very much for the thank you very much for being here because um, we will be count, counting on you the next time that the discussion about the ten-year plan comes up, and we will be looking for probably more money. Uh, HBAC will work with you and the town and the state for opportunities for public during that the process of the uh, reconstruction plan. And certain, certain number three, and finally. What you are about tonight, update for the Hector Beach Area Master Plan for changes, implementations, which we will hope will save DOT lots of time in its engineering phase so that things can move more quickly. And my final outline comment tonight is at the Hampton Beach Area Commission on May 24th, the commissioners will consider your comments that you are giving us tonight discuss and hopefully finalize the plan to move it forward for completion for the deadline is August 1st. Now let me turn it over to our presenters. Mr. Rose and Mr. Gordon. Thank you. Can everybody hear me in the back? Okay? A little higher? Okay. How about now? Yes? How about way back there in the doors? Everybody out in the hallway here? Maybe? Yes? Good. Thank you. So I'm going to try to be as brief as I can because I know everyone is not here to listen to the process for how we got here, but wants to hear what the results of all the work is that we did. Uh, but first, in the background, I'd like to talk through how things started, what the process looked like, uh, what was in the old plan, the current 2001 document, 
And then I'll turn it over to my associate, Mr. Cleary. We'll walk everybody through uh, what we're actually going to be proposing for the commission's consideration. So how the department got involved in the development of this plan in the first place uh, is a re direct result of the work of Mr. Nyan and the HBAC in 2013 to obtain a grant from the federal government, TCSP, Transportation System and Community Preservation Grant. Uh, it was one of the last grants awarded in that program. And the purpose of that grant was to update the Hampton Beach Area Master Plan. Uh, what we did, the reason why we're involved, rather, is the, the time that's involved with getting certified to use federal dollars would have added another year or so to the process. So to skip over that and recognizing an efficiency where there was one to be had, Mr. Nyan approached the department. Uh, we got involved and in turn went out and executed a contract with VHB to carry out the project itself. Uh, and their task was one, to do an update of the transportation section of the current Hampton Beach Area Master Plan. And part of that involved evaluating the recommendations from the 2001 plan, and then obviously developing additional alternatives beyond that, and seeing how far we could advance that engineering design while still staying under the auspices of planning. Now there are restrictions, but based on the fund types, I'm not gonna bore everyone with the details, but suffice it to say, uh, there are reasons why we're doing what we're doing. So real quickly, uh, if you've had an opportunity to review the 2001 Hampton Beach Area Master Plan, there are several recommendations in it. Some may be a surprise, some won't be. A uh, replacement, a reconstruction of the current Hampton River Bridge is one of those items. Reconstruction of Ocean Boulevard uh, from its current configuration of two lanes one way to only one lane of one way traffic. Uh, and looking at Ashworth Ave, changing that into a two way facility with a center turning lane. And then changing all of the side streets, all the letter streets, to one way, and reconstructing most of the intersections along the course. Now, there's also discussion of signal installation, particularly uh, four signals along Ashworth Ave. And then uh, looking at pedestrian crossing areas. And the 2001 plan actually discusses pedestrian crossing as blocks uh, being used for pedestrian crossing areas. There was some discussion of transit service. There's been interest for a while about providing a shuttle service from some specific location to the beach to try to address the traffic situation. And so let's talk about what we've been doing in this current plan. So this is the largest crowd we've had so far with this. And Jason, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but do you ever see crowds like this for the town master plan? Uh, that's to be determined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, we provided uh, multiple opportunities for public comment. Uh, starting out back in 2015 when the plan started in earnest, the first public meeting we held for the project was in May of that year, and that was really intended to be a workshop to get a feeling for what folks thought about what was in the 2001 plan, what other areas of concerns, uh, concern that folks had that needed to be addressed, and what solutions people wanted to bring to the table to identify for us to consider. And between May and October, we sat down with the folks at BHB and others, worked through that, and tried to come up with additional alternatives or refine some of those alternatives, and then came back in October of that year to present the findings both to the Area Commission and to the public to get additional feedback and find out if we were going on the right path or if we were missing something. What, uh, the, the other thing I wanted to mention here, you'll see it on the slide, is we mentioned Facebook and Twitter. We recognize that the beach and the folks that are, that are out here on the beach aren't necessarily here year round, uh, particularly if you're visitors or others uh, that are coming to the area. And so because of that, we wanted to expand the reach of just the traditional meeting place, everybody come to the meeting, ask questions, not knowing that we'd see this kind of a crowd, uh, certainly, um, but to expand that beyond just the in-person and go to the online platform. And we, we were able to uh, engage quite a bit of uh, folks and get some good feedback on some things through those opportunities. Uh, in addition to that, after we met with the Hampton Beach Area Commission and the public, we went back out and did some additional engagement with some of the stakeholder groups that have an interest here on the beach. 
So that includes the town departments. We met with the administrative folks. I see they're in the audience here. Good to see you this evening, gentlemen. Uh, we met with public works uh, and the police and fire folks to get a feel for what they had to say about what the options were and maybe what some of the other additional considerations that wouldn't come from the public, but would come with folk, from folks that are dealing with operational issues on the beach on a regular basis. We met uh, with the Department of Resources and Economic Development, now Natural and Cultural Resources, because they uh, operate the beach, and we need to know what it is that they have for specific concerns related to what we are proposing. And then in addition to that, uh, if you don't know this, the Department of Transportation is a large agency, and we have multiple bureaus that have very distinct things that they're focused on. And so for the purposes of this plan, we needed to make sure that we engage with all of those disparate groups to ensure that we're getting we're not finding out things after we've already started the engineering process that it would be great to know early on in the planning. And just to talk real quickly, uh, our original study area, so the original grant that was awarded uh, to the Hampton Beach Area Commission was $350,000. Uh, if you don't know about federal funds, they always come with match requirements. In this case, it was 80% federal, 20% local. Uh, and so that results in about $300,000 effectively in cash available to fund the work that we're doing here. The other 20% is not being paid as $50,000 in cash. Rather, what we're doing is leveraging the time that the folks on the Hampton Beach Area Commission, uh, the town staff, and the Department of Transportation staff are putting into this project as matched to the project so that we're not requiring additional cash resources from either the town or the Area Commission. It's a great way to manage that $350,000 grant, but what it also does is it raises a host of issues as far as we've only got so much money to cover a lot of ground, and we have to be strategic in the way that we approach how we're going to do this. So the original scope of the project went from roughly Church Street down to the Hampton Bridge. Based on some additional consultation following our October meetings uh, and some conversations with folks in town, we expanded the study area to continue the project from, the from our original, roughly around Boar's Head, all the way up to the intersection of Winnicott Road. And all of those uh, alternatives that were discussed or developed in the course of our project will be presented to you this evening and discussed. And then real quick, some additional detail on the scope of work. Uh, before we had any of the public meetings, we were out here gathering additional traffic data. We had some good data on the main streets, but what we lacked was some details on how those connecting streets are functioning and who's going where and when. Uh, we did our public outreach and the surveys, the workshops, alternatives development. What you're going to see tonight is limited, but what we considered was a much broader uh, effort and has been winnowed down over time based on the, the different interactions we've had with the various stakeholders and public. Until we get to concept designs and some additional traffic analysis. And ultimately, when we finally get this list down to where we think where the Hampton Beach Area Commission is comfortable with saying this is a final list, developing some detailed cost estimates so it's more than just a We'd like to do this, but we don't know how, it, how much it's going to cost. Rather, we've got uh, engineering professionals that are engaged, looking at all the various resource impacts and potential other additional costs that we're not considering. And at the end of all this, what we're ending up with is a master plan with an updated transportation section that has graphics, uh, everything you've seen hanging on the walls. That's all something we're going to make sure gets packaged into that final plan. Pete. and not a tie. Is that all right? Great. Good. Okay, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Try and get through the uh, alternatives and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna use the red laser. Yeah. Sure. I'm Pete Clary. I'm a highway engineer with uh, BHB. Thank you. So we're going to go through 
hit the alternatives on Ashworth Ave, on Ocean Boulevard, uh, all the way up through the Winnipeg Road intersection. So we'll start at Ashworth Ave. Some of the alternatives that we looked at was a, a two-way traffic, three-lane segment alternative. So it was either one lane in each direction in a center turn lane, or two lanes in the southbound direction and one lane in the northbound direction. We evaluated that. And then we also evaluated maintaining the existing two lanes in the southbound direction and modify basically the striping and the sidewalks to include some additional amenities for you know, bicyclists as well as some landscaping in the uh, sidewalk areas. On Ocean Boulevard, um, at the State Park area, we looked at a roundabout intersection as well as a signalized intersection in and through there. And for the, um, for the master plan update, we're gonna recommend that both be evaluated further once it gets into preliminary and final design. <clears throat> at the intersection with Ashworth Avenue and uh, Ocean Boulevard, we also looked at a roundabout there. We looked at the uh, a signalized intersection and then we also looked at maintaining the existing intersection and it was felt through the process that we wanted to go ahead and maintain the existing intersection and how the traffic flows through that area. The intersection up at Highland Ave where it intersects with uh, Ocean Boulevard, we looked at a roundabout as well as a signalized intersection and we're recommending the, the signalized intersection in that area there. <clears throat> the intersection with Church Street, we looked at a signalized intersection and then a jug handle intersection is, was an idea that came about through one of the earlier public meetings and that you'll see that one, I'll show you the graphic on that one to explain that one a little bit better. Uh, but that's the one that's being recommended with the plan. And then for some of the corridors, the corridor along Ocean Boulevard from Haverhill Ave to A Street, there was basically three primary alternatives that were discussed with basically reducing the northbound lanes down to a single lane, enhancing the sidewalks, maintaining the, the uh, on-street parking. Um, all three of these included bike accommodation, so I just didn't list them on, on the slide itself, but they would be included in some form or some fashion. Uh, the second alternative was two northbound lanes with enhanced sidewalks in eliminating on-street parking. And the third one is basically two northbound lanes with enhanced sidewalks and maintaining the on-street parking, which is the recommended alternative at this time. The corridor, once you get up to Nut Ave, up to Boar's Head, uh, there was you know, a three-lane section with east side parking to Church Street, and then maintaining the center parking north of Church Street was the first alternative. The second one was basically the same as the first, ex except um, have a roundabout at Highland Street and make Highland Street two-way traffic instead of one-way traffic. And then the third one uh, was essentially a three-lane section with parking along the east side for the entire corridor from Nud up to Borsa. Uh, in the area from Dumas Ave up to Winnicunit, the, the alternative that was identified was a one lane in each direction with bike lanes and on-street parking. There wasn't anything else that was considered uh, for this particular section of Ocean Boulevard. So now we're going to jump back and show some of the graphics. So this will help explain what I kind of just went over rather quickly. So this is Ashworth Avenue, uh, the existing cross section. So the, the cross section is this piece up here. You'll see on all the graphics that I showed tonight, it has a cross section. So when I refer to that, that's what I'm talking about. And it's basically the west side of Ashworth Ave is here, the east side is here. So this is if you, if you cut the road and sliced it right down uh, across the road you're going to end up with a, basically a six foot sidewalk on the east side, a five and a half foot shoulder, 11 to 12 foot travel lanes, two of them, an eight and a half foot shoulder on the west side and a five and a half foot sidewalk. And this is kind of what it looks like. You get your two lanes headed south, shoulder, sidewalk, a parking area, and then another shoulder. It's, yeah, it's, it's, there's like 10 minute parking in some locations along that. So this is the recommended alternative in through here. 
So from a cross-sectional standpoint, you can see that we're adding the street trees in through here. The sidewalks are getting a little bit wider, up to, to eight feet on both sides. You have a bike lane of about five and a half uh, foot in width. And you have two 11-foot uh, travel lanes, again, heading in the southbound direction only. And that's the same thing on the other side. I and mean, this is kind of the plan. So you have the two, two lanes of traffic headed south like it is today. The shoulders get modified so they're wide enough uh, for bike lane up on both sides. And then the shoulder and the sidewalks get widened a little bit and you can put some street trees and landscaping and those types of amenities in there. So this is kind of a before picture. As you can see, again, west side, east side, two lanes, a narrower shoulder on this side, a wider shoulder over here. And then this is kind of an after type picture where the shoulders are essentially the same width. Uh, sidewalks are essentially the same width and you have some street trees up and down the corridor. So now we're going to start uh, at the southern end of Ocean Boulevard. Uh, so the, the river bridge is over here. State Park is here. The Port Authority property is up in here. The Chinese restaurant over in here. This is where Ashworth's coming in southerly. Ocean Boulevard is splitting off to go for the northbound direction and through here. The color scheme is basically all the gray is kind of the proposed pavement that's out there. Um, the yellow or beige in through here is where the sidewalks would be. And basically the black and white would be kind of like the striping, if you will, and the lane use that's out there. Um, and the green is essentially the grass that would be out there. So with this one, this is the signalized intersection at the state park. And it basically aligns with the driveway of the state park. And you can see on this side over in here, it kind of enters into this area uh, in, in the marina area in through here. And you'll see when I talk about the roundabout, the next step, the next slide, that it's in a different location. But for this particular case, you know, you're going to come over the bridge. And the location of the bridge hasn't been determined yet, whether it's going to be in the same spot or shifted to the west or shifted to the east. So depending on what happens with the bridge, the road could come over here and then move back into the middle, or it could come on this side and move back into the middle, or it could stay where it is today. Everything is to be determined still at this point. Um, but you're going to come across the bridge, assuming it's one lane in each direction. We're going to open it up to a right turn lane into the state park, open up a left turn lane uh, to get into here. Um, and then coming the opposite direction, you're going to have a through lane that heads south, a left turn lane to head into the state park, and a through lane that heads north. Um, obviously, this is a new leg to the intersection, so this is the fourth leg, so it's one leg in, one leg out. You still have two-way traffic uh, down on Harbor Road in through here. You still have the, the parallel parking that's out there. You still have the, the parking that uh, accesses these, these buildings in through here. The sidewalk will come up uh, and connect in over here, crosswalk, set the signal as necessary. The sidewalk is essentially the same on the east side over here. Now one of the, the concerns in this whole Ashworth Area Avenue uh, intersection in through here is the access and egress uh, from the Chinese restaurant in through here. So what this is proposing is that all the folks that want to visit uh, and eat at the Chinese restaurant, they would come through the intersection uh, in through here and then we create a driveway to be able to get them access in and out, and then they'd be able to get back out uh, to Ocean Boulevard much more safely through the signal of their section. So this cross-section down here is basically right through this area and through here. So we'd have a five-foot shoulder over here, which is wide enough for a bike lane, a 12-foot uh, through lane northbound, a 12-foot left turn lane to enter into the state park, and a 12-foot uh, southbound lane, and then a four-foot shoulder on that side. And then you'd have the grass area over here, and then you'd have the same, uh, approximately the same cross-section over on Harbor Road that exists today. Same background picture, just now this is a roundabout option in through here. So like I, note, I mentioned before, um, now we're lining the roundabout up with basically the driveway into the, the marina area in here. Now, once the project moves forward into preliminary final design, they'll get, they'll get traffic numbers as far as who's coming in and out of the, of the uh, harbor area as well as the state park. They'll redo 
the uh, traffic analysis in through here, and they'll be able to fine tune where the intersection, whether it is a signalized intersection or a roundabout, should go. So, again, coming off the river bridge in through here, a standard one lane roundabout in through here, and then it heads down. And it's basically the same. You tie into the, the two lanes down in through here, off into the, uh, the intersection with Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard in through here. So, you're coming out of the state park. Instead of coming out straight like you do now, now you're going to have to basically take a left and take a right and go through the roundabout uh, if you're going to go south and you know, just take a right-hand turn if you want to go north. Um, same type of idea, going out of uh, Harbor Road in through here, depending on which direction you want to go, um, you just make your way around the roundabout in through here. And then you have uh, wider sidewalks in through here. There's these little, you can see these little extensions of the sidewalk that go to the road. Those are basically for a more novice bicyclist. If he doesn't want to ride his bike through the through the roundabout, he can come up, get off the road, get on the on the sidewalk, dismount off of his bike, walk his bike around until he feels safe, go back on the road, and off we go. <coughs> so this cross section is basically right in through here. All right. So you got a 10 foot sidewalk, a 5 foot grass space, a 12 to 15 foot traffic lane in through here, uh, a variable width. Uh, island, which is the green area in through here, and that's just basically the same thing on the other side. 12 to 15 foot travel lane, uh, 5 foot grass area, and 10 foot side. Moving along, so now we're going from Ashworth up to Havel Ave. Uh, this is a, a, a different uh, type of typical in through here. So we're going to start up in through here, and you know you have the reverse direction lane coming down Ashworth that kind of makes the left hand turn. So you got to come down through here. You got the single lane that's coming through the, either the roundabout or the signalized intersection. Now you have the two lanes uh, similar that's what's out there today. You push it all the way through, and it carries all the way down through Havel Lane. Now some of the differences in, in through this segment of the the, uh, the corridor is that it's wider up in through here, more so for uh, the cars and some parking and some uh, you know unloading of goods and services by the trucks. So this cross section in through here, you have a six foot shoulder on this side, a two foot grass area, and that's up close to the intersection, a five foot shoulder, 11 foot lane, a variable width median, so that the two lanes of traffic can come together eventually, that's why it's zero to eight feet. And then you got a 11 to 15 foot lane on this side, a wider 10 foot shoulder here, and a, and a six foot shoulder on that side. Now with the next slide, Again, same background, but now we're closer to the beach. Now we're down in through here, and you can see that the yellow or the beige strip in here, which is the sidewalk, is now much wider. So instead of having a six-foot sidewalk up in here, now you got a, a ten-foot sidewalk on this side, the five-foot shoulder, eleven-foot lanes. You only have an eight-foot shoulder on this side to accommodate any of the uh, pickups and drop-offs and then a five foot shoulder on that side. So there's a little bit of a difference depending on how you're, where you are along this corridor. And that's true pretty much up and down Ocean Boulevard. It's not a very consistent um, width roadway out there. So you'll see as we keep going through here. So Hazel Lab here, and then it's still, again, headed north. So this is where uh, all the improvements occurred several years ago. So again, now this is the west side, so you got the existing uh, sidewalk that's here. So we're going to uh, maintain that in through here. Uh, you're going to have a five foot shoulder. There is going to be on street parking in through here that's, that's not on this typical section right here. And then a five foot shoulder, two 11 foot lanes, a four foot shoulder, and a six foot uh, sidewalk on this side. So, and then by the time we get down to here, the width changes, and basically what happens is all of this stays the same. Um, and now the, the sidewalk is able to get wider because the overall width is wider, and the shoulder is able to get wider because the width is wider. We widened the shoulder from four feet to a maximum of eight feet. It was felt that that was wide enough for trucks to get in, park, unload their stuff, and get back in without disrupting traffic and the shoulder width was basically whatever's left over, and it's always a wider section. This section in through here, this is Casino Ballroom in through here, um, and this cross section, again, it, it's, it's wider in through here, so 
We're going to have a six foot shoulder, two 11 foot lanes, a 10 foot shoulder, and an 18 foot sidewalk that basically matches what's out there today, plus or minus. Um, we keep on moving. Oh, uh, one of the couple of other things I want to we, in here, we, we had a pull off area in through here so that folks can come in. Uh, if they need to get folks out of the car and drop stuff off to go to the beach or whatnot, they'd be able to do that and move back in. And then you'll see you have the, uh, the on-street uh, parking in through here, similar to what's out there today. So that continues on with this. So this kind of, uh, this cross-section in through here, uh, we're basically taking the existing parking that's heading in through this area, utilizing that as a 15-foot sidewalk. And through here, you got a 40-foot parking area, which is this. Then you got a five foot bike lane, a four foot shoulder because there is enough width out there to buffer the bikes from the travel lanes and cars. Two 11 foot lanes, an eight foot shoulder, and a 12 foot sidewalk. As you can see in through here, the, the, the uh, sidewalk, the yellow sidewalk in through here is a lot wider. And as we get closer to the intersection up in here, it gets a little bit narrower. So depending on what the situation is, where you are along Ocean Boulevard, it changes. Keep going with this one. So now we get to Highland Ave. So Highland Ave, you have all the traffic that's coming in and wants to get access to the beach. So we had to figure out, all right, what do we want to do with this intersection in through here? Like I said before, we considered a roundabout. It didn't work very well from a traffic perspective. The signalized intersection worked much better, and it involved less property takings and whatnot. Um, one of the things that we wanted to include was basically a way for, again, for folks to get in here they provide some 10 or 15 minute parking in through here so folks can, again, unload their cars, go to the bathroom, whatever they need to do, and then go back out and come back in and find a, a permanent place to park in through here. The signalized intersection will take care of the folks coming to the beach. It'll take care of the folks that are headed southbound in through here, and then it'll take care of the folks that are headed northbound. As you can see in through here, there's one lane northbound that's going to be stopped in this area over in through here. And the second lane that's headed northbound here is basically going to be able to reverse directions at the intersection and then head back south on Ashworth or head west. Uh, this is going to be a, a median island in through here. We're showing it as green. That'll be a detail that gets worked out in preliminary and final design, whether it's grass or landscaping or concrete or pavement, to be determined. Um, and then there will also be accommodations uh, for pedestrians to get across the roadway uh, safely at the intersection, uh, depending on where they are. Um, you know, once we get north of Highland Ave, then the cross section changes a little bit. So now you're going to have, all right, instead of having, there's the existing cross section that's out there today. So today, you got two northbound lanes, you got the sidewalk over near the ocean. You get the parking in the middle, and then you get the two southbound lanes and the sidewalk on this side. Right, so that's kind of what's out there today. With the proposal here, um, we're going to take all of the parking and push it up towards the ocean, similar to what's on the other side of uh, you know, the casino ballroom and whatnot in through there. So you're going to have a 10-foot sidewalk, 60-foot plus or minus parking area in through there. A 10-foot shoulder begins here. An 11 foot northbound lane, a 12 foot left turn lane, 11 foot southbound lane, a 2 foot shoulder, and a 5 foot sidewalk. That's what can, can fit in through here. As we move further to the north, the same cross section basically occurs in through here. The only thing that's a little bit different is the 10 foot shoulder on the east side gets reduced down to a 5 foot shoulder. And that allows the shoulder on the west side to get wider. And this cross section in through here, you can see there's only one car parked, so that's in this area in through here. So the cross section cuts right through here. So you have the sidewalk along the ocean, the parking, uh, you've got this is the, the travel lane, so this is this is the jug handle intersection. Alright, so folks that want to leave the beach through Church Street, they'll come off, they'll peel off to the right, they'll go around here, they'll stop at the signal, and when they get the green light, they can go through straight which is um, similar to how folks need to line themselves up today where the parking uh, is in the, in the middle. Of the so the, this cross section shows this is the, the, the turn lane here that these folks are going to come off and do that. And then you got a shoulder 
with three lanes of traffic through here, and now you got a wider six foot shoulder and six foot sidewalk on this side. Moving north, heading to Boar's Head, this is the same typical all the way up through here. It's fairly consistent. Again, um, 10 foot sidewalk, 60 feet of parking, five foot shoulder, the three lanes, a six foot shoulder. And it is a little bit wider, so we're able to get in, uh, an additional foot into the sidewalk and through this area. So once we get up into here, then we got to transition back down to get through like the peninsula area and through here. So uh, before we can get to Ocean Boulevard North. So when we're coming through here, you know, it's one lane in each direction. You'll see that it kind of continues through. The parking, you know, essentially stops. And then we get to the, the northern piece. And there's a couple of existing photos here. So this is the northbound. Here's the, the, the seawall and the sidewalk up and through here. You know, there's utilities in, in the middle of the road. There's guardrails separating the northbound side and the southbound side. Uh, so just concerns. Uh, here's another concern. Here's where the, the traffic is right in through here. You got to go four or five steps to get up to the, the sidewalk. Obviously, that's not optimal. Uh, and then this is in the middle where the northbound traffic is over here. You got the on street parallel parking on both sides of the guardrail, but you got a you know, three foot grade difference in through here. Again, that's not an optimal situation. You get folks parking in here and they open the door, it's going to swing open, it's going to hit on the slope. So, more things to be concerned about. So in through here, um, so here's Great Boar's Head in through here, here's Dumas Ave, it goes up to here and then it comes back down to here and it goes from you know, Dumas Ave just off the page and it heads north and then we get to win it here on the next slide. So we're going and we'll connect in, we'll have a left turn lane to Great Boar's Head, we'll pinch it down to two, one lane in each direction with the sidewalks and the bike lanes. You get up to, to Dumas, you get a left turn lane to get into Dumas, but it's basically uh, the three lane section. We'll pinch that down, and now running through here, you basically have um, you know, a grass area, a sidewalk, a bike lane, two lanes, one in each direction, and then uh, the reverse on the other side, where you have the bike lane, on street parking, and uh, the sidewalk. So this is kind of the cross section in through here, so this would be the sidewalk along the beach, on-street parking, a buffer uh, between the on-street parking and the bike lane, a bike lane, northbound, southbound traffic, and then it's the opposite, you know, tra uh, bike lane, a buffer, on-street parking, sidewalk, street trees. And then you get up to uh, the Winnipeg Road intersection in through here. So we're taking the, the two lanes in through here, we're widening out, so you're going to need a left turn lane in through here. You take this whole area, you reconfigure it, you put in a signal, you allow some parking in through here, they can pull in this way, they can get out safely through the intersection, uh, three lane section, and then you know, come in southbound in through here, you have a, uh, a through lane, and potentially a right hand turn lane with a bike lane in through here. Um, so that kind of runs through the, the recommended uh, concepts for the core. Now, understanding that this is conceptual design, there's a lot of things to consider that we just didn't have the time uh, to go ahead and consider that is going to be considered in preliminary and final design. So some of those things is obviously the, the, the bridge that's going on right now. We're going to have to get updated traffic analysis uh, because there were some locations where we didn't have any traffic at all, so we needed to go ahead and, and estimate what the traffic would be like at the state park and whatnot. Um, parking. Parking is going to be modified. Um, I would say that there, in the end, it's likely here there's going to be an increase in parking. Uh, drainage design and treatment is going to be a big, a big concern. And like Nancy said, that will get taken care of in preliminary and final design. Signage and signals, we're going to go over a couple things there, and then bicycle accommodation. So these are all things, and there's a multitude of other things that we didn't list in here, but these are things that are going to get taken care of in the future. Just to highlight a couple things, um, these are basically the two drainage outlets that are out there. Uh, one is at Church Street, and here's where the drainage comes out, and one's at Haverhill, and here's where that drainage comes out. So you got, what, half 
a mile, three quarters of a mile between the two areas, and you have two outlets. So obviously that's a concern. Uh, this is the Church Street intersection, and what I wanted to point out in through here, so here's the, the jug handle. Um, and you have the orange signals in through here, which were which where they would typically be. Um, and this one here basically falls right at the corner of that house. All right, so obviously these are conceptual plans. It's on aerials. The survey needs to be um, uh, gathered and whatnot. But some of the things that we're going to have to look at is, all right, we're going to have to do something a little bit atypical in through here. So from the signal standpoint, you know, we may have to take and eliminate that one, put one over here. So that is for the southbound traffic, and then put another one over in here for the traffic that wants to head westbound. This one over here should probably be fine. But those are, oops, sorry. Those are some of the uh, considerations for signals that are going to have to occur in preliminary final design. And then the other thing is, you know, you're going to have uh, parking, uh, no parking, you're going to have wayfinding signs, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, driveways in through here, there's a lot of um, spaces that you're not going to be able to put signs and whatnot, uh, whether it's on the, the, on the west side where all the properties are, you're going to have to address those things. And on the east side over in here, um, you know, there would typically be like a lane use sign here that basically says, you know, get over to the right to leave the beach. You know, so that shows up right here in the parking area. So everything that's shown on the plan is conceptual. Once they get to the preliminary final design, all those things will get taken care of. Bicycle considerations, so this is in the area from Haverhill to uh, up to like Nud in, in that through or up until the, uh, the pavilion and the casino ballroom and whatnot. So this is the existing condition where you've got on-street parking, um, a bike, let's call it a bike area. It's not necessarily a bike lane, it's really not wide enough, it's a shoulder, there's two lanes at the sidewalk, uh, the shoulder side. So this is a, a little graphic that kind of depicts that. So there's the parking, you got a seven and a half foot sidewalk here, you got an eight foot parking lane, a three foot shoulder, and two travel lanes. So that's not a very good condition for a bicyclist in this particular area. Because once this guy parks and he opens his door, he's potentially taking the whole shoulder. So obviously that's a dangerous situation. So some other things to consider, again, preliminary final design, is what do we want to do? Um, we can go ahead and we're going to maintain the sidewalk, maintain the parking, maintain the, the parking lane, and then the, the widen it from a three foot to a five foot shoulder. That gives them a couple extra feet. It's still not necessarily the optimal design for a, a, a bicyclist, but it's better than the existing condition. And then you go to what would probably be considered a, an optimal situation is the parking, the sidewalk, the parking lane, a three foot buffer. So when he opens his door, it goes into the buffer area. And then you have a bike lane in here and two shoulders. Um, and then the last one is basically having the parking, the sidewalk, the parking lane, and have kind of a shared travel lane for the vehicles as well as the bicyclists. And it's wide, so it's 16 feet in through here. So those are all the types of things that are going to get hashed out during final design uh, because they have an effect on the width of the roadway and the operations of you know, both the vehicles as well as the bicyclists. As far as the schedule and moving forward, tonight's the 10th, so we're here at the public meeting. There's an area commission meeting later this month. Um, the master plan updates will occur later this month and into June. We'll have another area commission meeting in June. And then the final master plan adoption is scheduled for the uh, beginning of August. Um, and then this is basically what uh, Nancy had talked about earlier as far as what's in the current 10-year plan is the, the $8 million in through here that's available for uh, the project. Six and a half is for construction, 1.1 is for engineering, and 300,000 for right away. And that's it. Hey, okay, girls. Take your station. Are you two ready to answer questions? Sure. Okay. Um, I see a hand up right there, so. Hi. Yeah, my name is Kevin Castle. You gotta hold it up to your mouth, though. Yeah, my name is Kevin Castle. I live in Cleaning Park Island now in the area of Camden. And I got a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a couple of questions. 
first portion of it is uh, on the church street where they have the light. Is that going to be one lane going straight through, and then you go to the right to take the left? Yes. Okay. Second question I have is on the top of Highland Avenue where the light's going to be. Is that going to be uh, a right-hand turn like it is now, or one lane and straight across at the light? Yes, yeah, so it'll be one. Mm -hmm. Here, coming out, we'll have the right turn lane. Okay. And then the lane will go straight through and access the parking, or a left turn lane to head northbound. Okay, and that's going to be one lane both ways? Uh, we're using that one lane both ways. Seven turns. Seven turns. Okay, so you basically you go straight across to take the left. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Ocean Boulevard up here is one lane in each direction. One, okay. Right. When are they going to do the traffic study? Because I live on Highland Avenue, but in, every Saturday, especially during the uh, summertime, it's a parking lot I'm trying to get onto the beach. Um, it runs all the way down to Route 1 and even further. Um, uh, so, some of these, we did. But my main concern right now is that church thing. When well, you're making just one lane to go north and then have to go to the right to take a left. I've been sitting on the beach late in the afternoon, five or six o'clock, and people are sitting there waiting to take a left hand turn now. And this goes down beyond Highland Avenue. So, I'm, you know, like I said, I, I'm not a highway tourist or anything else like that, but I just want to know when are these traffic studies going to be done? Are they going to be done? During like January fourth week, yeah. July fourth week, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be done in February? Unfortunately, we have an experience up here going way back when they back in recent they were done in So, yeah, no. as far as the traffic study, in an area like this where it's you know in the in the non-peak months, it's significantly different than in the peak months. They'll, they'll do the traffic counting during a more peak month, and then they adjust it to make sure that they're accounting for the entire year, and then they'll identify it, and they'll probably do something a little special in through here, because this is, uh, it's not your typical roadway out in through here, to, to, to more better address the summer peak season. Well, January, February, no peak. Right, there's no problem with traffic. Thank you very much. Could you uh, make sure you put your name on your card and pass it in, please? Per print your name. There was a card on your seat. Yeah. 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 Oh, here we go. Just print your name on there so we can get the spelling correct for the record. Okay. Uh, Andy, would you, Andy, you want to come over to this side? Yeah. And I'm going to say I see a lot of hands out there, so I want people to be concise with their questions and um, try to make them as quickly as possible so more people can speak. And I see this uh, selectman standing up, so you've got a couple of seconds to give your question. Microphone. Oh. First, uh, thank you for the presentation, but I have a couple yeah, yeah, of hold yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Better? OK. Anybody check on Brown Avenue, which is where it goes off and to Ashworth Avenue, where the fire and police response goes, I hope you're not going to try blocking Ashworth Avenue. Number two, there are crosswalks, there are supposed to be crosswalks there now, and none of them are posted. You don't have to wait until you do your whole plan to have somebody from the state get off the dime and come down here and post those crosswalks. Um, the uh, seawall uh, north of Boar's Head is insufficient. You spent $10 million redoing it, and it's not going to stop the water. Drainage is terrible north of Boar's Head, and I don't know whether you're planning on addressing 
those problems, so like but you have problems the, all over the street here. So like when that drainage will be addressed in the next phase. And, and, and while all the people north of Boar's Head flood out. Well, we can deal with that at another time. Right now we're well, to get information it, for the it should have been dealt with before this. And how many spaces are you going to be adding? Because you're looking for more revenue. Yes. That's what you're looking for, revenue. And it looks to me like some of those spaces are on the sand. Thank you. Know. Um, let's get someone from um, over there. Hi, Debbie Elia. I live at 493 Ocean Boulevard. And my question is, right now, we can pull out of our lot and go to the lane heading south, and cut over through the parking in the middle to go north. How are we going to do that? There's no way in the middle of the summer we're going to be able to cross over two lanes to be able to head north. Just before Boar's Head. That picture on the right that's printed out, that's our building right there with the pool. So right before Boar's Head. Right before Boar's Head. But after Church Street. Anybody from anybody in front of those the parking lots in the middle? That's what they do now. We pull out, we cut through the parking lot to go north. Anybody and now if you eliminate the parking lots in the middle, there is no way we're going to be able to pull out across all those lanes to be able to head north. You want to respond to that, Claire? Sure. So, just so I understand your question correctly, you're, you live over here someplace? Right here. Correct. The white building. The white triangle in the map, right where you're pointing. Right there. Okay. <laughs> And if you want to go north, north, yeah, right now you kind of cut across into the parking lot, right? And then you're able, so you got to cross one lane of traffic, right, in order to get there, right? We pull out, go south for a short ways, and cut. Oh, so you make a right, and then you make yes. a left, and then you make another left. Yes. Got it. Okay. So, um, I, I guess th there is no simple answer in through here. I mean, if you're able to get a gap and you're going to need to have somebody, I guess, be nice enough to provide that gap, then you'd be It's able not going to happen. It's back to back, bumper to bumper, going both ways. So they... And they come around that curve right there. Yep. So fast. It, it, it's not bumper to bumper. So to be able to cut across and go north. And we want to do that to avoid all the traffic down in the center. Sure. So we go up and go up when it kind of, to avoid it. We won't be able to cut across. OK, thank you. Any effective comments? So would you carry any cards when you sell them? Any selling cards? Thank you. Thank you, Jim O'Loughlin, Cutler Ave. Um, let, let me start by saying the, the basic premise of this plan, I don't quite understand. I don't understand, I don't understand why we would take what, what I consider a great natural resource of the beach, which is being able to drive up the coast, and we're turning it into a parking lot. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. People, people that come and visit at our house from, from out of town, out of state, one of the things that they compliment the area on is that they can drive from Hampton up into Northampton, into Rye. They have a clear view of the ocean. People come from all over to take that view. We're taking that and we're saying it's more important to have a parking lot. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Now. If we're doing this to get an extra 90 parking spots for the beach, I think we're spending a whole lot of taxpayers' money inconveniencing a whole lot of people to get 90 parking spots. Because so far, that's what I keep hearing. Well, we're picking up 90 parking spots. But okay, let me get off that. If you get back to Church Street, you're showing one lane coming north, and you're showing a jug handle, which, which would also be a stacking route for cars that are, uh, want to turn onto church and go. Can you tell me how many cars are going to stack in that? Oh. Yeah. 40 to 50, easy. 
you have to analyze this to figure out how far back it does need to go. And that was so 86. <laughs> All right. Oh, then, then let me say this. I don't think this is going to work. Because the gentleman who spoke earlier who said you can sit on the beach on a Saturday or a Sunday, you can watch that traffic backed up to the casino yes. waiting to take a left. If you use a jug handle with a stacking room, even if it's 40 cars, you, have, you, you essentially have stopped traffic going north on your two-lane design. So you're going to have gridlock even with a traffic light there. So I, I don't understand any of this so far. And the other part which you, you didn't touch on, but if I could just add, is that another bathroom facility at Church Street? What, what, what could possibly make someone think that's a good idea? <laughs> Having to go. I certainly will. So am I done now? Is that? Oh, I'm done. Okay, thank you for your time. Good job. <laughs> gentleman's comments about the jug handle because I agree your, the northbound traffic is going to be um, stopped when you're trying to reroute the left hand turn. Um, I noticed that um, you are trying to add a number of parking places but one of your goals is to increase off-site parking and provide public transportation to and from the beach. I don't see that happening here. <clears throat> um, if I understand the need to maybe move parking over next to the seawall, I do not understand why you would increase parking and decrease traffic flow. And if you have to um, take away some of those parking places, and contain, continue to have two lanes going south, two lanes going north, but also have a, a, maybe a smaller median between them so that pedestrians trying to cross above Highland and above Church Street, pedestrians trying to cross in those uh, areas, <coughs> it's not going to work when you're trying to cross three lanes of traffic right mixed together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any over here? Yeah, Edmonton Hall and Hampton residents during the summer, having Ave. Uh, I concur with the gentleman here on that jug handle. Jug handle. Church Street should be eliminated for a left-hand turn. Bob Preston had an idea many months ago about putting a rotary right at the foot of the boar's head to eliminate. If you wanted to go left onto 101, you would go up, go around the rotary, and come back and go out, go out Church Street. That seems like a much better design than this jug handle. Especially with the jug handle coming off a one lane. Yeah. This it's Crazy. impossible. Whoever thought reducing capacity by 50% is going to improve traffic, you eliminate, you eliminate this, uh, a lane on both north and south, and you're increasing capacity? I, I, I guess in 95, when they expanded 95, instead of putting another lane on it, they should have taken one on it. This, this is ludicrous. The other uh, problem I see is down at the end of Ashworth, uh, and the uh, where the turnaround is to go north, back onto Ocean Boulevard. If you're going to have that cut across from the state pier into the state park, you should have a lane going up Harbor Road 
from Ashworth Avenue and then cross over there at the lights and come back if you want. It, uh, that would eliminate that congestion right there at the, at the, at the end of Ashworth Avenue. Instead of coming around the corner from Ashworth, right there, and add a lane on to, from Ashworth on to Harbor Road, right there, come over and make, coming across, you can come across, you can either go right, straight ahead, or left, get back up the boulevard. The, I don't know, reducing the number of lanes in the north section is is ludicrous as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I see. Hi, Maury Nails, 86 Dearborn Avenue. My question is at the junction between Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Ave. Yeah. You have traffic on Ashworth Ave, two-way two traffic. Two, two lanes heading southbound. Two lanes heading southbound. Yeah, and mm -hmm. this, this here, you're going to be in the right-hand lane if you want to continue southbound, and you're going to get in the left-hand lane if you want to reverse direction and go back to northbound. Ashworth Ave, behind the casino, would not be two-way traffic? That's one way? It would be two lanes southbound. Southbound. Just, just like it is today. Okay, that's what my question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, at the back. My, hello, my name is Olga Peno, 15 Tunnel Ave. I do business on One Ocean Boulevard. I'm watching this roundabout or set of lights, whatever you want to call it, closing up at Ocean, at Ocean Walk. I don't know who comes up with the sign, with that particular design. When they come over the bridge, they need a lane, two lanes going into the state park, two lanes coming out of the state park. They need two people working to collect money in order to, to get rid of all the traffic back up. The traffic on a Saturday and Sunday is backed up all the way down to the, the, the boroughs in Seabrook because they cannot get into the state park. The people line up from 6.30 on on a Saturday or Sunday to try to get into the state park, open up earlier. I'm, I, I know they are not business people, but if that would be my parking lot, they would be open and I would take their money gladly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Did you have a chance to fill all that? No, I did not, but I will. Thank you, Mark. Jesus, I didn't know that's the first person. Sure. Uh, I live uh, on Harbor Road. Drew Nicolini, 24 Harbor Road. Uh, I prefer this design, either one of them, as you show, uh, that uh, cuts off that intersection of Harbor Road with Ocean Boulevard. I take my life in my hands and every time I come out of that road because of the Ocean Walk parking lot blocking off my north view. I've had a couple near accidents. I saw a motorcycle T-bone in a car. Yeah. The motorcycle was coming down the Ashworth. The car pulled out of harbor. And I've, I've, uh, I've witnessed another couple close calls. Uh, removing that egress there, I think, is a very good idea. That is a very dangerous corner. Beyond that, there's not enough parking there for ocean walks, so they're always parking in the street. Emergency vehicles can't get down there. Sometimes I can't get down there. <laughs> Uh, this gives more parking to the ocean walk, and it eliminates it from, from the street, which is, I think, a very good idea. So I'm firmly behind this aspect of what you're doing, and it's long overdue. Thank you. Nancy? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, thank you. My name is Kimberly Horseman. I live on N Street, and I've lived on N Street for a year. And one thing I'd like to address is I've had a considerable amount of difficulty navigating the ha town of Hampton information, like as a newcomer, becoming aware of things like what's going on with the, with the roads, this meeting, for example, when the roads are closed down because of road races, things like that. So I'd appreciate it if someone could 
let us all know what the best source of information is for us to be updated on all this. And my second thing is I think that we're working very hard to manage the existing traffic that we have. Shouldn't we spend some additional time trying to alleviate the traffic by utilizing the areas, for example, the area south of the Hampton Bridge where um, the seafood shop is, there's a lot of um, open area there. I don't know who owns it. But then the area over by the marina near Al Goran, where there's a lot of open area there, would those be viable places to have shuttles come from to keep the people off of Ocean Boulevard to begin with? I'm not sure if that's part of the problem. You can second to that. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Steve LaBranche, 469 Ocean Boulevard. Thank you for giving, giving us a chance to do this. I've been living at my house on Ocean Boulevard right at Rocky Bend now for 23 years. And I want to tell everybody here that I sit in my front room, and I'm retired for 11 years. I've been watching the traffic. And if you ask me, is there a traffic problem at, at Rocky Bend where you live? There is no traffic problem. Winter, fall, summer, and spring, there is no traffic problem along the stretch where I live, okay? Granted, there is traffic on some weekends um, coming off the beach, and I would say that I'm being conservative if I said 10 weekends a year during the summer, and that's being, I'm actually being very generous because it's not 10 weekends, it's probably five weekends in the, in the end of July, the beginning of August, that you have your backups. And it's amazing to me that the police chief, uh, Sawyer, has come up with some not expensive but very practical ways of moving people around on the beach. The pedestrian fencing, for one thing, um, it keeps people from jaywalking so that it doesn't slow down the traffic along in front of the casino. As well, he puts a two policemen, one at Church Street, one at the, church, at the parking lot right there, and he moves 50 cars at a time off the beach, starting at 3.30 in the afternoon, and within an hour and a half, there is no problem on the beach because he's just emptied everybody off of the beach. So those two things alone work very well. Now, as far as all of the changes that you've shown, from the bridge all the way up to um, the front of Ashworth, go ahead and do all of those. Those seem to be pretty practical. It seems as if everybody likes that idea pretty much. But once you go from Ashworth north to Boers Ave, the one thing that I would say is my biggest single concern, I consider it a crime, to take away forever that magnificent mile going north on Route right. 1, the Route 1 scenic fire. People come from all over, and, and the thing is, I live on the beach, I look at the magnificent Atlantic every day, but people that live in Manchester, that live in Massachusetts, that live inland, they come, they come to Hampton Beach and they get to see the, they marvel at our mighty Atlantic. That mile stretch that you can, from the stage up to Boar's Head. You it's can't true. see that in Seabrook. You can't see it in Salisbury or Newburyport. And once you get to Rye in Portsmouth, you can't see it. You don't get to see the ocean again until you get to Long Beach in York. So that stretch, the, the fact that you're going to put a parking lot, move it, there is no problem from Ashworth North. There truly isn't. There's problems with sidewalks, granted. There's problems with um, not having bike lanes, okay? But if you have that jug handle the way you have it proposed, and you have it starting in front of the Grand View, and, and you talked about this in your March presentation to the Area Commission, and somebody said, how long is that jug handle? It's 300 feet. Well, the length of a normal car, plus giving it a little bit of space in between the front and the back, is about 20 feet. So you're going to get 15 cars in that jug handle, and everything else is yeah. going to back up. Yeah. Now, right now, with two lanes going north, the left lane, they put them single, 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 yeah, single, single. Blinker. Blinker in order to take the left, and everybody else 
that might know better, they stay in the right lane and they just continue north because they know they get to Winnetonnet or High Street, they can take a left, go through town, get on Route 101 a lot faster than getting tied up in that traffic on Church Street. So I, you can put, okay, I know that, I'm sorry. You know what, I think I've made my point, everybody. Thank you very much. about that if the purpose of this study is of this uh, grant is safety and traffic improvements the area north of Fort forest head is a tremendous safety hazard the sidewalks that are three feet above the street level cannot get up on the sidewalk in most of the area there are no crosswalks there is only one opening in the uh, middle barrier between the things. So people have to scramble up and over that area. The opening doesn't correspond with an opening in the seawall. The traffic flow along there is horrendous. We have drag races along there almost every night. The other night there were four Corvettes racing down the two lanes, crossing over in front of each other. Um, there are strips of black tire tread in this area. Um, I really feel that this area has been long neglected. Uh, the sidewalks are terrible. The drainage is terrible. And I would like to see the plan more fairly distribute the revenue to include the entire beach, not just the area of South Beach. Well, I said, when they have that $8 million, the first 280 million will be spent signing up that way and looking at all the problems. And the Beach Area Commission and stand with you and work with them to make sure that it's okay. And they've got to do a better job. Do you have uh, written notes here, Lynn, if you want to pass in for the record? Uh, yeah, I have uh, six letters from other residents who are able to, to be here. Traffic signals on the beach don't work. April, April 2008. The bridge was down on one lane for construction. We had a red light going to Seabrook. When it turned green, they had a red light coming to Hampton. August 2008, 90 degree day. The beach was the 4th of July. Our distinguished retired police chief will tell you the beach was a standstill for five hours. Even his officers couldn't get on the beach. Take your jug head, which isn't going to work, because if you have traffic signals there, they are going to block from Mr. and Mrs. Windermiller's property all the way past the Ashwood, and there won't be a fire truck or a police cruiser to get screwed in. Right. Thank you very much. We're talking about taking care of bicycles. Let's discuss the residents. Yeah. Hi, I'm Marilyn McIntosh, 522 Ocean Boulevard, so I'm at Horsehead. And in March, we had three horrendous storms, I'm sure you're all familiar with. The waves were 25 feet high and came over the seawall from Church Street up Horsehead, and then on the other side, where the seawall started, it took out Dumas Avenue, they had to come with a backhoe. I can't imagine you putting parking on the ocean side. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. So where's the money? Thank you. Um, Any other hands? In the back there. Any glasses? Raise your hand again, please. <laughs> Hi. Oh, 
Mr. Gashner. And my husband and I have been in charge of the communication uh, for 13 years. And we have taken care of the green infrastructure. There isn't a whole lot of it in Panther Beach. What I see from this, you're going to get rid of all the beautiful flowers that we grow and trees and everything, and you're going to cover it with black tops and concrete. Right. Um, I think the emphasis is wrong. I don't see it on uh, people who live at the beach and appreciate the beauty that's there. Uh, I just see more more problems. I also, unfortunately, um, live uh, on that area where there's going to be around the bottom. So I come out right now into a dead end street. Now I'm going to come out into traffic. So you've not made my life easier. By there's a choice to be approached. There is a lot of problems, and I've complained about the hazards of, of the Ocean Walk area and um, coming up of Harbor Road and all of that. So driving here, I said to my husband, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. So I, I think what you're doing, the plan is terrible. And um, one other thing I want to say, there are memorial stones and memorial benches and memorial trees and all this that we have installed over the past 13 years. So I am broken hearted at the thought of all that can be demolished and thrown away and there would be no um, thought of memorial benches and, and all that stuff. So if this passes, which I hope it does, and I hope a lot of this goes away and, and because it doesn't make sense and it's going to cost a lot of money and there's going to be more devastation than what we're going to gain. I hope someone will give me a heads up to say, hey, you have like, you know, six months to find another place for you to plan for um, Because I, I do want to be proactive and I do want to save some of the things that we cared for and the people who donated. So give some thought to the people who live here and the history um, of the people. And we love this area. And um, I, I, Thank you. Change, is, change is difficult. A lot of this does not make sense at all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come on up here. Okay. Thank you. How do the people that live on Great Fortune have access to Ocean Boulevard? I thought I saw a picture of you that had one, had some access, but this one shows no access from Great Fortune to Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, on this particular plan, it doesn't show the access, but there would be an access there uh, to provide, just like you have one in the big. But we, we, didn't, we weren't able to show all the driveways and all the sides. Hi, I'm Kathy McLaughlin, and I live at 377 Ocean Boulevard. And I have two questions about the Church Street area. Um, so the first one is, can, can you just explain to me how um, a little bit north of Church Street, can you just explain to me how we're going to come out and go left and, you know, get to Winnicott? I mean, how, how do we do that? Because right now, you see that? There's a condo right there. Yeah. So how would we come out of there and, and go left the way yeah. we can go left now? That was a similar question to this to one over here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in general, you would come out, you'd have to get, get through the southbound lane, and then you have a center turn lane. So you could pull into there for some safe haven if you weren't able to just go directly into the northbound lane. So basically, that won't be possible during July and August because, and, and, and also with that light, then traffic will probably back up north the way it doesn't back up now, right? Yeah. I mean, so that that's not a good thing either because then all those motorcycles will be sitting there and all those cars that are so loud, you know, and it's, it's just all going to resonate all along. 
all been about, so we could call the houses and everything. Right. So with, how is that a good idea? With with the signal, yeah. um, the only time that the southbound traffic is going to have to stop is when the folks that are coming uh, through from this side that want to exit the beach. Right, but it's still going to have to stop. Yes, it will. They're, they're, I mean, July, August in particular. So you're going to have, now you're going to have backup both ways. You're going to have backup this way, and you're going to have backup this way. So there's just going to be like a big traffic jam there. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, no. Okay, so, so that's, I don't know why that's a good idea. I don't know if anybody here really thinks that's a good idea. But the bathroom, where, where's the data on that? The, I don't, I don't know if there is but, any data. But why, who, who decided that that's a good place to put it? I mean, why is that a, where's the information that says that's a good place to put a bathhouse? Yeah, whether this is advanced and preliminary final design but, but where's the information that says that's needed there? I mean, there's got, you know, to build a bathhouse, you have to be able to say, a bathhouse is needed. We have a former chairman of the HBAC, and he says that was considered a form. The original plan, that was considered along with the other bathhouses. It was considered and then dropped because of cost. That was good. Convenience, it's needed. Cost, it's not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Kathy, no. Hi, um, Kathy Silver, Three Ocean Boulevard. So if you could go down to the state park area, please. Basically, what you're doing to all of us at this end of the beach, we live on a dead end street right now. We have since 1949 when the new bridge opened. You're turning our dead end street into a busy two way highway. We already deal with a lot of backup from when the bridge goes up and down. I can't imagine now having a set of lights there that will compete with the bridge. I mean, imagine sitting there at a red light, you finally get through the red light, you move a hundred feet and the bridge goes up. And so then you wait again. And Maybe if the rotary would alleviate that problem, but it still puts a huge amount of tra more traffic in an area that's already very impacted by the bridge traffic. And I've been asking for this for many, many years. Do you plan to put crosswalks in there? At this intersection? Yes. Yeah, there would be crosswalks there. Okay. And I get, to, to answer your other question on the bridge and the intersection or roundabout, there would be additional coordination that would happen in preliminary and final design. Because one of the options uh, that they're considering for the bridge is to not have you know, a movable bridge. So you'd be able to drive straight through and the, the bridge wouldn't have to stop traffic at all. So once they get to that point, then again, additional co coordination between the bridge project and this project would have to happen. Kathy, that, that crosswalk also is a push button one, so the traffic would stop to uh, I don't know. I'm loud. I just yell it out. I know. Uh, 709 Ocean Boulevard, which is also from North of Boar's Head. And I'm a little confused. I saw our acknowledgement of the problems of Ocean Boulevard, North of Boar's Head, by pictures of those stairs that you literally cannot use and get that steep incline, which is dangerous. And that <clears throat> involved bikes and pedestrians and everybody, and there's no way of getting across as we mentioned earlier. So I saw our acknowledgement. I heard you say there's going to be studies, but my perception is. This first set of recommendations, this first action, we're not going to address that. But I just want some clarity on, is we're going to take a small piece of this money, you know, at least allocated to some safety issues north of Boys Head, or are we going to wait for some 
further time and more people get injured. So my name is Bill Watson. I work with the Department of Transportation and do a lot of the coordination with our 10-year plan. Um, as, as Nancy has said previously, in the 10-year plan right now, we have $8 million identified for this entire quarter. Um, through the preliminary design, through the final design process, using this plan to inform that process that will begin, we're going to have to make some hard decisions about how the money is divided up, what part of the corridor it goes into, and um, whether we want to approach the legislature about increasing funding. We'll do that. Such that, in the end, if what people want is safety in the southern part of the corridor, safety in the northern part of the corridor, we have to come up with the funding from somewhere. But right now, $8 million isn't going to do it all, and so through the preliminary design and the final design, uh, we're going to have to make those decisions. Bill, can you tell me that um, when the engineering study begins in October, mm -hmm. since basically the design, the concepts and that have been put forward tonight only go to Boar's Head, will they start at Boar's Head and go north so that to give these people some relief or at least we're looking at what they're doing? Well, I think some of the concepts that you saw from Pete tonight actually go up to Winter County, uh, not in as much detail. But they go up there. But absolutely, that's something that the project manager from the department is already starting to consider, is what additional work needs to be done in the corridor to look at the entire length from the bridge up to one Appendage. Yes? Why is this still being considered? Nope. This is being considered because the Hampton Beach Area Commission saw a need to update a 15-year-old master plan. And they went after grant funding to do that. Why is there a massive plan in the Because the legislature passed a statute many years ago to say that the state and the local community all love this resource that we have down here, wanted to protect it, and wanted to do it in a coordinated way. Okay. No. No. The master plan update has to be approved both at the Hampton Planning Board level and at the state level. Let's go over the ballot. My name is Peggy Delong. I live on Cutler Ave. Um, I totally agree with, disagree with you making a parking lot out of where our view is. Um, the bathhouse that you're proposing, I go on the beach bright and early every morning. There is an opiate epidemic. There are syringes on the north side of the beach. I see them in the sand all the time. We're going to put a bathhouse in. I'm like, the last few mornings there have been people sleeping north of the jetty across from Cutler Ave on the beach. And for today, 5.20 tonight, I am um, not on the beach side, I was on the other side. I went to cross Church Street to get down to Cutler Ave. Halfway through, a car looking both ways, never looked to see if there was pedestrians just missed me. The two cars behind him stopped to make sure I was okay. So like, if there is money, let's make the beach safe, not build parking lots. My name is Fred Rice, I live at City Room, Weather Lane. I'm a former, I'm a former uh, chairman of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. One of the biggest things that I notice in this there's an inconsistency in the number of lanes, the amount, the ability to, to pass traffic all the way through Hampton Beach. Uh, one of the things that has always been a principle here is you've got two lanes north and two lanes south in terms of capacity. And what we see here is various places where all of a sudden it drops down to one uh, or it increases back up to two. And I'm with whoever it was that said there must be magic here when you take four lanes of traffic and two lanes and uh, two back-to-back uh, -back, uh uh, parking areas, and all of a sudden you've only got three or one lane of traffic each way and a turn lane. A turn lane at Hampton Beach yes. doesn't work. Right. A center turn lane won't work. Now, to give the devil his due, one of the reasons why moving the parking toward the ocean was 
considered or even put in this plan was the fact that during the winter, uh, the, those nasty old waves, those big storms that we get, throw some pretty big stones over, and there's an awful lot of damage to cars going up and down. So if you move the roadway farther away, the ocean doesn't throw those rocks quite that far. That was one of the big reasons for considering doing that. The other one was, you talk about safety, pedestrian safety. I'd like to have a nickel for every time I've had somebody either not looking or texting or whatever walk right across to get over to the beach. If you put the parking next to the beach, that won't happen. Now, is there a way to do that uh, so that you don't spoil the view? I agree that that is one of the best views going. I grew up here. I know exactly that that view has always been beautiful. Uh, the boar's head itself and the barnacle. I love that view up there. But go north of boar's head. What about all the people that live there that can't have, have not been able to see the ocean for the last 50, 60 years because of the seawall? And the seawall, we just put a lot of money into improving that to keep that part of the beach safe. So we've got a lot of conflicting interests here. These guys are working to try and put these things together. Um, one of the problems with the bridge, and why I hope, Bill, that you, the, the, the plan will end up with a four-lane fixed-span bridge, was that uh, the police, nobody has been a bigger champion of that than I have. Believe me, I've been pushing for that for the last 10 or 15 years anyway. Uh, if, if you have a big event at Hampton Beach, you can't have one lane to get out of here in the south. Right. You've got to have two lanes to get out of here. You know, we almost had the section of Hampton that's over on the south side of the river. They almost, they tried to secede several years ago because they can't get emergency response over there right. during most of the summertime season because there's one lane in each direction. If those are packed up, an ambulance, a fire engine, the police cannot get over there. So these are all considerations. I think one of the overriding considerations should be four lanes of traffic capacity from the bridge to Winnicott Road. Four lanes of capacity. Then build everything else around that. Maybe you can work some form or some equivalency of a jug handle turn. Church Street turn has to be improved. That's not safe either. But maybe that can be incorporated into it. Uh, but, and oh, another thing, I noticed that the parking lots here are very, very wide. Um, the one down the, the entrance at Haverhill Street, that's a one-way drive up through that thing. I noticed some of the arrows here, some of the parking lots are two-way. We don't want to have a roadway in the middle of a parking lot. Come in one end, go out the other, and go up to the next place you can turn around and do it again. But that is just a common sense approach. Let's not take up quite so much space in bike lanes and extra park. Take the parking in front of the playground, take it out of there. Let's make that roadway safer for cars and bicycles. So what if you lose tenant? One of the plans that the Peach Commission had showed that parking taken out. And it was all of what, 10 or 15 or 20 spaces? Let's not, let's not say you're doing it to get more revenue from parking. That's not true, but neither is it true that they're trying to uh, get too much, uh, take away parking. Let's do it from a, from a practical standpoint and live with whatever the result is in terms of parking. We've got plenty of parking in Hampton Beach for everybody. It's just that it's not where you want it, when you want it. Thank That's you, the man. only problem. Um, the lady over here. Mary Ellen Long, 493 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I wanted to ask about the crosswalks that are shown on these diagrams. Is that all of the crosswalks that you're planning? No, the, the crosswalks that are shown here, those will all be reviewed and identified in the proper location from the distance of the area and the final uh, one. Do you have a suggestion? I think to improve safety of pedestrians all along the beach, have all the crosswalks repainted and have those signs that stand in the middle of the lane that say state law yield to pedestrians. In a lot of places along the beach, you can't even see where the crosswalk lines are. If you don't know where the steps are, particularly along North Beach, that that's a crosswalk, you wouldn't know to stop there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Lee, 
tag on it, and I live on Johnson uh, that comes off of Ashworth right across Cal Street. Uh, we live on one of the three streets that floods yeah. every month. Uh, so everyone in my street and the two um, adjacent ones, which is Riverview and Perkins, we all need to move our cars out of our driveways up onto the beach to avoid them being flooded by the marsh. And we don't really have any place to park without getting ticketed. Um, and in the summertime, it's all full with beachgoers, so we don't have a place to park. So we have to stay up till midnight to find a place to move our car out there and then get up in the morning and try to get it back to our house before we get ticketed. And these are all the residents on those three streets. Um, and so in addition to that, we have that parking plus the summer parking plus the winter parking. So all of the streets from um, L Street on down around and back up to the ocean on that right before the bridge. All those one ways have a different traffic pattern in the winter and then in the summer. So once starting now, everyone on the west side has no option of going north. So the folks that had said, how do you take a left and go north? We don't, we can't, we've never had an option of going north. We always have to go south to 286. Mm -hmm. Um, some of our guests that, so in the summer we end up having to go into town and come in, back into town and be home by 8 a.m. because there's no getting out. And so some of our friends that come to visit, they'll start leaving our home, which is at the beginning of L Street. They'll get to the other side of L Street in an hour. So they haven't even made it up to church. Sometimes you can take B or C Street, depending on which direction it's labeled at the time, and cut off over Brown and then come up to the water tower and then pick up 101. But to take an hour, maybe an hour and a half, to just go from one end of L Street to the other end of L Street, it, or you take your chances, or you go across the bridge and then the two lanes of traffic going across the bridge can't get on to 286. So we can see from our house um, when the bridge is up because all the traffic passes from the bridge all the way past to um, up to the pier, which is, I don't even remember what letter. So that never moves. So, and that's still two lanes going south and going north. So for everyone that's on that west side trying to take a left to go north, it's impossible. So there's, we have winter traffic patterns because the signs all change. They just change now, so we can't go north. Uh, then we have the summer, and then every road race, the whole thing gets closed down. So this other woman that said she was new, we've been here probably in total about five years. And so we wake up and it's seven o'clock in the morning and we can't leave the house because the whole area is closed for a road race and people can't get to work. And the same for residents, if we could, I don't know how to, do we go to Twitter, do we go to Facebook, do we get a mailing, like we don't know where to go to find out. Um, so those we are- We have a selection center. The information is always on the Bike the town website. Bike the information is always on the town website. But is there a way for the residents can, that can get through? Like, there's people that are trying to get to work that can't leave because so of... I think that's a discussion you need to take up with the select. <coughs> okay? So thank you. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Nobody over here. Oh. I am. I don't recall all the... I can't. I and uh, with regards to crosswalks, I noticed up by the Galliads, the town of Hamlet has very wisely put in a new crosswalk signal that when a pedestrian wants to cross the street, push a button, a solar power light flashes. It's working very well. We go down south every winter. Every single crosswalk at our beach has the same system. And perhaps the state could use some of the money to mark the crosswalks with similar <laughs> The flash of the across the street. Yes. Every crosswalk, or I go in Georgia, has those lights, and they do work. Good. I believe that is a cooperative effort between the town and I have been experiencing them. Let's get some cooperation here and get some crosswalks for There's a lady sitting there. And then we'll get them all picking up. Steps. Um, we've only moved in within 18 months. We're right across from the 
sometimes I can't sit on my deck because I'm so nervous about the people who put all their points and all their kids, you know, and then trying to cross <laughs> it with this like, no, there's no crosswalk. And the stairs get tilted at an angle that you're coming down the wolf grab and pulls you. So I mean, I know there's lots of money. Let's just we just put in this one crosswalk. Just move it, just put caution because it's a very, very dangerous thing. All crosswalks have to be in the same time. I said all the phone calls have to be in the end. I've made, since I've been there, many phone calls to various you know, organizations, you know, and the DOT, and everybody says no, it has to be ADA. Okay, let's do it. Okay, um, Yeah, Jim Waddell, I live on uh, 190 High Street on uh, North Beach. And first of all, I want to thank the Hampton Beach Area Commission for all the work they've done for getting this grant. And I think it's really important, and the state's done a lot of work, and the town's done a lot of work, that we work cooperatively together to come up with a solution to get this to work. Now, the one thing, and I hate to say this, but the one thing that I said from the beginning is, the problem is too many cars. So it's not how to move the cars on the beach, it's how to get the cars off the beach. And I think there have been plot plans in the, in the past that have been turned down. And I, we have to think about cooperation and doing things. I think the Rockingham Planning Commission came in with an idea to put an intermodal center with a shuttle that was turned down. I think years ago there was a thing where there was a parking garage down about the uh, Route 1, and that was turned down. So when people are always working against each other, it doesn't work. But I think the problem is cars on the beach don't go together. People on the beach do. So that's the basic concept. Thank you. That's a I have a follow-up to that idea. <laughs> I will, so thank you. <laughs> Nancy O'Hawkland, Cutler Ave. Um, a follow-up to the shuttle. I know that parking is a big issue, and with all the businesses on the beach, I can only guess at the number of employees that have to drive into work to the beach. I'm wondering if the town can somehow come up with, especially on Saturday and Sundays, having lots in town with a shuttle for the employees of all the businesses on the beach. It's got to free up well over 100, maybe 200 spots. So that's a suggestion. sign in the middle of the crosswalk that says, you know, crosswalk here, that just because it looks like a mile-long drag strip. I mean, it's very wide, it's very straight, it's very flat, and people come through there at unreasonable speeds. And we can do things before this program starts, you know, in, in six, eight years or whatever, and do some traffic calming on Ashworth Ave, and for short money, improve safety there. Can you stick your name on paper and send yeah. it down? Was Ken and all the Ashford letters. Can you write and give us a shake of that? Do I see another man? Okay. My name's Gordon Square. I live at 34 Arcadia Avenue. North Beach, yeah, it needs some rotary bed. It needs some cranes to be squared away. It needs a light at the corner of it. When it comes in road and the main drag, that's it. You got all those people coming into that or you know, whatever it is, and you got people in the summertime that have to step off three feet to get to the ground and then run for it. Now on the other side of things, we don't need a public bathroom, a bus station, and more parking spaces up there. That's our neighborhood. We like it the way it is. <laughs> Skip Web 28 Seabury. I'm glad that I'm actually representing the beach once again. Uh, 
I have been involved with uh, development of two of the suggested plans, and this film I didn't even have anything to do with. <laughs> I would like to make a suggestion as far as the uh, Church Street 101 exit from the beach. Right now, it's one of the most dangerous places in town. You turn, come up to it. There's an abrupt left-hand turn. You might have seen the sign, or you might not have. But all of a sudden, you see a whole bunch of signs, and you say, hey, I'm turning left. That can reduce accidents. You go in a little bit, you have traffic coming, parking coming out. Before you get to a stop sign, that is another area where you could have an accident. And the main thing is to get cars off the beach. So I propose, and it's just a suggestion, I know you have to choose which one is best. Move better signing further down the road, saying there's going to be a left hand turn. Make that left-hand turn not abrupt, but make the curve such that you can go around it at 30 to 35 miles an hour. Right on the curve. Remove the skirt street stop sign. Move that stop sign so that it stops traffic coming from the north Sad. If I'm going to have to ask you to kind of tighten it up for myself, there's no more person over here to speak. Wait, wait, I'm almost through. Okay. Go ahead. Sad. Now that means that the traffic leaving the beach flows 35 miles an hour without stopping. <laughs> the other lane goes continually up Ocean Boulevard. You provide a stoplight that can be turned off or on when the traffic is heavy. This allows cars coming from the south to have a chance to continue to go south at a three to five minute interval. I thank you. Right here. Hi, I'm Ray Blondo Jr., 26 Ashworth Ave. And um, I just want to say that I've been listening to everybody here in this room, and I see a general consensus that people are concerned about the character of the beach just as much as they are the safety of the beach. And I think that the strongest point I've heard by far tonight is you can't replace that one mile strip. You can't replace that view. You can't replace the memories that have been had or the ones that will be had. That is the natural resource here. Because sometimes in business, things may not be efficient, but it's still successful. And this beach has been sought after and people have been coming here for generations, including myself. So I would ask the state, the DOT, and I thank the commission for doing their job, the state for coming down, but the state's looking at this as a big, more of a thoroughfare than a journey. People don't want to fly through this place. Most of them don't. But I would warn and caution them that once it's gone, it's gone forever. And I think everybody here made valid points. You could spend $280,000 just putting up the correct signs, putting the correct crosswalks, uh, marking them properly like you see at Disney World and all these places where they communicate with people, you'd solve 90% of the problems. And then you make sure you get your correct traffic surveys over 12 months. Put someone here for a year. Let them live in three different apartments and let them travel around here. Because it seems to me you're not understanding how the beach really works. 
We're just going to throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you all very, very much for coming. I will close the hearing. 